In this In Vivo 10 demonstration, we're going to talk about how to use matrix coding queries to explore our data. You see here a matrix that I've already created that is number of times the book has been read by the language that the child speaks at home, and I've chosen to display the number of sources that are coded in each of these cells. We can get an idea from this matrix of how many children uh, read the books each time by language, with perhaps the idea would be maybe children who received dual language books read the books more times because they had uh, less access to, to books in both languages. Um, that doesn't necessarily seem to be the case. We can explore a matrix coding chart by looking at the, the numbers of sources that are coded in each of the cells, but we can also look over here at see it visualized in terms of a chart that shows the same data. And in either case, we can click on either a chart cell or one of these bars, and the program will take us right back to the data that is represented by that. So you can move back and forth between a visualization in either the form of a matrix or um, in the form of a chart and, and take a look at the data that way. So how do you create a matrix coding query? first thing to do is to come up to the Query tab and choose Matrix Coding. And we get the Matrix Coding Query box, where, which is where we define both the rows and the columns and where we want to save the particular query. So in this case, I think this time I want to look at the number of times that the book is read by gender. So I'm going to define rows first in terms of number of times read. So I'm going to use Selected Items click the select button and I need to go to the nodes finding the, that set of particular nodes times red I'm going to expand that and I can click them all at one time so I'm going to you know import them as rows all at one time by clicking OK now that I've done that I've got to say add to list they all appear here one of the things you notice is that um, I have one of these nodes I consider to be sort of out of order. I've got more than three times because I added, added that at the end. And I want to move that up after read three times. So I'm going to select that and move it up in the hierarchy. I think I like that better. Now I'm going to go to the columns and I need to, to get an, the attribute gender, male and female. So I'm go I need to change define more columns. I need to change that to attribute condition. I'm going to select that. Again, I have to look for my node classifications. And here is gender. Click OK. And it says child gender equals value female. OK, I do want to add that one. I need to add that to my list of columns. And I need also male, of course, so I'm going to select one more time. Use the same process. node classifications, gender, click OK. At this time I want the value to equal male, so I'm going to use the drop-down box which has all the attribute properties. Click OK, and I'm going to add this to my list of columns. Now let's just check that. We've got rows, we've got re reads one time, two times, three times, more than three times, four times, and five times. In columns we've got child gender equals female and, ch and child gender equals male. Let's look under Query Options. I'm going to ask this to open in preview only. That means that when I run the query, it'll open just for me to look at. If I want to save it, I'm going to have to take an extra step. I do think I want to add the, the query syntax to my project, so I'm going to put Add to Project. And this is adding the syntax of this query so I don't have to redo it again so I can run it over again if I'd like to. So I'm going to call this um, times read by gender. And I'm going to enter that it's a matrix query so that I'm sure of what I've got there. I'm going to check my options again. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave it as preview only. I've got my criteria. I'm going to click it I'm going to ask it to run, and we see it working down below. Now, when you first run any matrix coding query, unless you change the default values, what you see here are the number of units 
that are coded to each of these cells. But I'd like to see the number of sources, and I happen to know that there's only one survey per child, so I know that if I have the number of sources, I'll also have the number of children. So um, in order to change that, I'm going to right click, and you see it says cell content. I'm going to move over, I'm going to, move over to change that. Um, first of all, you can see what is being uh, re represented in the table by looking to see what's checked. It currently says coding references, but I want to change that to sources coded at all classifications. And in order to see the change, I'm going to need to rerun that, so I'm going to close that. And I'm going to come back at the top. <clears throat> I'm going to close all of these just to keep from confusing us. My, my query itself, I asked it to add it to the project, so it's it's saved in the Queries folder, we see here. I've got Times Read by Language. That was my previous one. I'm going to now do Times Read by Gender, and I'm going to open that by double-clicking, and it will rerun. Again, I want to change the content of the cells to Sources Coded, so I'm going to change that again. And now here we have it. So we see that, for example, there, there were 11 children who were female who whose families read the book two times, and also 11 children who were male whose families read the book two times. Um, we can take a look at the chart that displays the same data, and you see uh, we can make the chart fit on the whole page there, so by making it just a little smaller down with the slider at the bottom. We see that two times is certainly the most common number of times that families read books. If we want to see the actual data that goes with any of these, as I showed earlier, just double click on the bar and we move directly to the actual data units that are coded in that bar. So we can move back and forth between the node matrix chart and um, visualization of the chart. The other thing we can do is we can export this chart if we wanted to put that in an article we were writing or whatever, and if you'll, if you'll right click, it says export chart, and we'll just leave it with its current title. I could change that, but I think I'll just leave it. I'll tell it to save. And then if we look out on our desktop, you'll see the chart, times read, just, just as we uh, created it a few minutes ago. You can also export the results of your node matrix into an Excel chart. Same way, you right click on that, it says export node matrix, and I'm, we're going to export it into an Excel chart, I'm going to save that. And once again, we'll look on our desktop and see if we can see that. Here it is. And we've exported the information into an Excel chart, which you can, you can obviously format and, and analyze in the, in the usual ways. We have one final task in this node matrix query, and that is we want to save our node matrix to our project. If we don't save it, and it's just, if we are just looking at it in the preview, when we close the tab, it will disappear. Um, so, for instance, if I were to close this, it would be gone. But there is the possibility of always rerunning the last query, which we can do here very quickly. We've already got the syntax here. We're going to tell it to run. And we've just recreated it. The only thing that we have to remember to change again is the cell content, because it, by default, is always coding references, and we want it to be sources coded. Okay, so I've recreated that. Now I want to save that. And the way to do that is to go up to the Query tab under Store Query Results. And it's going to give us a choice of either storing it in the Results folder under, the, under Queries in Navigation View, or we could also store it in the Nodes folder. There's a place for Matrix Nodes. But I'm going to leave it under the Results folder. Either way works just as well. So you see, it, you see it appearing here under Queries in the Results folder so that we can get back to this. It's always best to rerun a query right before you're ready to export it or to, to examine it, just in case you've made changes which have not been included in the, in the last run.